two. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the Movement is Medicine show. And today we have a show that's going out to all the parents out there because, as we know, with things reopening, we have kids getting back into sports. But in many cases, they really haven't been doing much the last year, year and a half. So welcome, Dr. Andy, Dr. Ash, Dr. Lee. Today we're going to talk about how we can help our kids as they get back into sports, back into activity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. It's a great topic. I mean, it, it, for us here in the clinic, it's 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 really fun to see the kids again. I mean, we're sorry they're getting hurt, but boy, is it ever. It's just like it feels like things are changing with COVID and starting to open up. And it, it's such a bright light to have those young athletes coming in here again. Um, but I would say that we've noticed quite an uptick over the last few weeks with uh, girl, uh, with soccer starting, football, mm-hmm. and I think basketball's right on the heels. Track is in preconditioning Tra- as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, football's on. We've got you football know. games this weekend, and we had some last weekend, so we've already been seeing a couple of those guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I've seen some soccer. And so, you know, um, I think, you know, I, I, I have two teenagers, and um, the reality is that they haven't been doing a lot of pre-game conditioning mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. When when the lockdown first happened, like a year ago, back in back in March of last year, I think for like two three weeks, both kids, I'd get them to come into the gym, the home gym, jump on the treadmill for a few minutes, do like a little mini workout. But that lasted about two three weeks. And so since that point happened, I know that very little physical activity that has been intense. It's definitely not yeah. like there's no routine like they used to. Right. Like that's right. one of the biggest things that we're seeing is like kids literally jumping from like maybe they were like riding their bike around the neighborhood with their friends or something like that and now they're like full-blown playing two days things like that yeah Yeah. exactly like maybe they did some maybe they did a little bit of snowboarding or skiing during the winter season yeah maybe they've gone on some walks or bike rides maybe but maybe they got a one board for christmas so now they don't even have to skateboard anymore they just ride around (laughs) on their one board i'd like one of those that's pretty (laughs) sweet i mean my son has one he keeps trying to get me on it and i'm like dude yeah. Well, I don't know if I'd have the confidence to ride it, but I'd want one. They're cool. <laughs> they, the big fat tire, they're, they're pretty yeah. cool. He's, and he, the electric bikes. I mean, I see those oh, electric everywhere. Bikes. I mean, kids are just like cruising along on the electric bikes. I mean, have you seen that hill in Edmonds, though? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm like, where's the pedaling, though? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I will tell you, my boys um, were kind of motivated to stay in shape. and But then their gym closed. I mean, they go to Planet Fitness. Okay, right. with all their friends, and that's what they used to do, right? And then it, and they loved it, and then then it, you know, everything closed, and so they just haven't been doing a regular routine, you know. And they and they'll they'll do it spotily. They're like, "Mom, build me a fitness routine. I want to, you know, I want to get a six pack." And they start doing pull ups on the door frame and all this stuff. You and, saw them in front of the mirror yesterday. That was comedy. Yeah, the teenage <laughs> boys in front of a mirror is always a great time. So oh, yeah, <laughs> it takes my son Dash sometimes for like forty minutes to get. <laughs> and I, he's he's just in the bathroom, like combing his hair, oh, like yeah. over and over oh, again, like so flopping handsome. his hair around oh, yeah. and stuff. Like, <laughs> oh, dude, my gosh. what are you doing? Like, wrap yeah. it up. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago <laughs> for me. I was definitely the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, love him to death, but the, you know, definitely missing the definitely missing the routine right? for sure. Yeah. I mean, as an example, uh, my son Dash is sixteen, so he's just started preconditioning for track, and you know, he loved track and was was great at it. The first workout that they did for preconditioning was a heavy calf, like in a lot of heavy calf exercises and running drills. He literally could not walk two days afterwards. He he like tiptoed around. He he was Mm -hmm. like doing this weird walk. Like where he's like walking on his tiptoes, like in it with his hands, like in claws, like he could tell he was like in excruciating pain. Just spasmed. Huh? Yeah, like a vol- he looked like a velociraptor, and I was like, I was like, bud, like doing? Wa- walking like that isn't going to help you. I was like, let me show you a couple foam roll. I'm gonna throw you a lacrosse ball. It was too painful. He couldn't even. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let me show. You. Here's a gentle stretch you can do. He ended up just walking like a velociraptor for like a week, and then. To be honest with you, that's probably the most stuff that I've seen thus far, though, is like calf mm-hmm. stuff for those younger kids. Like, I mean, I think it, it comes down to like they've been sitting a lot, like very stationary, and now they have to like rebound, cut, um, like all that kind of stuff. And they're just not used to it. And the calves are taking the brunt of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, look at their lives now, right? I mean, yeah. our kids are now doing Zoom school. They're not even getting up and getting to school anymore. My kids used to bike to school or... You know, and now that's not even happening. They're not moving between class and class. They're literally right. sitting on front of their computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so everything's shortened. I mean, yeah. hip flexors, calves. I mean, they're deconditioned. So, I mean, really not not to plug head to toe, but 
one of the things I really recommend is to get your kids, you know, get get them looked at, get them checked over, you know, get their joints moving correctly, things reset, a few little exercises, review on that foam roller, lacrosse ball work to kind of get their bodies ready for movement again because they're not ready. Yeah. And along that same line, uh, you, you might also have, you know, you have the deconditioning, you have oftentimes uh, this year spent in very poor posture situations. So like my kids oftentimes take their Zoom classes from bed where they will also fall asleep for mm-hmm. a majority of their classes. Uh, yeah, they're not the only ones. Yeah. <laughs> Painfully, yes. Yeah. So, but also I've noticed just some of the things that come with a year of bad posture. Uh, you know, tight, tight shoulder, neck, headaches, mid-back pain from a lot of time spent on the computer and the Xbox. So I think those are also, now is the time, if you're looking at uh, your, your child going back into a sport-type activity, to come in and, and get a new patient work up for them and kind of go through all of those different aches and pains they might have and or weak spots that might have developed. Right. Yeah, and then, Lee, I think you mentioned like, you know, it's, it's hard for our kids to get enough sleep anyways, but um, trying to get a tap on the sleep again, getting them, getting them rested. Mm-hmm. Um, and then nutrition and hydration, right? It's really key for injury prevention. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. It does Typically, like, it's that routine of, like, being in school and stuff, like, walking by the water fountain, like, drinking out of that, like, literally, like you said, just walking from class mm-hmm. to class, like, now they're they're in class, they're sitting at their bed, and then if they go to another class, it's just the screen changes. It's not that they move to another class mm-hmm. or anything like that. All. They don't they don't have, like, movement reminders or anything like that while they're in school, which I wish they would. That would be great. I mean, I know they have some PE stuff, but it's not, it's not the same as, like, going to PE class where you're actually, like, expected to run and, like, provide effort towards that stuff. It's more like you write it down and then you send it in and then they approve it or not. So it's, uh, the accountability for physical activity is just not there anymore for those, those younger kids. And I think it's going to, ch- I mean, I think it's, I think we're going to have a generation of kids who are going to have this I don't know. They, a disconnect from physical activity too. I, I just think it's interesting. I've just noticed in my daughter, like she used to be much, much more interested in doing stuff physically, and really over the course of this last year, that has just fallen off so hard. Mm-hmm. So part of it is the challenge of like, how do I make this? How do we make movement fun again, basically? Or like, how do I get it, her interest level back into it? Mm-hmm. Because there's now also this association with like, if I if I do a workout or something, I'm going to be in a lot of pain. I mean, it's going to hurt. It, I'm not gonna be able, you know, my ache, all my muscles are gonna ache, that kind of stuff. Well, even just the mental aspect of like uh, being told for so long that you could potentially be exposed to like COVID and stuff like that. I mean, we see it with with um, teenagers as well, where they're some of them are complacent to start training again because they they're just not sure, they're not confident in whether or not it's gonna be a safe environment. So that ha- lends like some of its own challenges as well. Absolutely, so for those team-based sports, especially where they're in groups and totally. Yeah, I mean, like there's a. I had one parent the other day tell me that her daughter that her daughter's not going to play soccer this year just because she's not comfortable. Just because even though they're being told they can go back, her personal comfort level is just not there yet. So, yeah, it just it, I mean it feels I think for our kids and for uh, and for us as adults it can sometimes all of a sudden feel strange to be in a room or in a, even on a soccer field with a bunch of people all of a sudden when you know yeah. your world's <laughs> been restricted to three four people or five people maybe mm-hmm. and all of a sudden now you have 12, 15 people around it seems like a lot it has been a quick turnaround the past like month i mean like i i go to the park like magazine park like every sunday pretty much and like now there's kids playing full games there's parents on the sidelines they're all distance but like you weren't seeing that three weeks ago four weeks ago right. yeah i think you know we have vaccination efforts with the change in weather and and i think you know it's great to leverage the change in weather to tap into that motivation maybe to start small i mean we've talked about this um on prior shows where we were just talking about for us as adults like how do you get moving again how do you prepare yourself to get back into physical activity if you haven't been physical and we talked about starting small i think a walk i i'm i've been amazed at the power of a, of a walk and you know for the last six months i've been uh, hitting a ten thousand day a step goal right it's like a simple goal and and I work out and, and run and stuff too. But every day I hit 10,000 steps. And there's been a few days that I didn't hit it. But a surprising amount of time I have hit it. And that has been transformational for me. Like I love it so much. So I don't don't underestimate the power of just getting your kids out for a walk once a day with you or maybe the dog. Especially now that the sun's shining, the birds are singing. If they're, but if they want, they don't usually want they to. They don't want to. Mm-hmm. That's no, the thing. They do they not want, want to go. I mean, some there's some gr- some kids I know that do want to have a walk with their mother, but mine don't particularly. Okay, so they this- take the dog for a run, though. They'll take the dog for a run, like around the block, you know, not far. They'll go play paintball. They'll go play paintball. <laughs> Paintball's a good and- game. Yeah. Fun. 
Yeah. You know, the thing is, I think we got to sort of think a little bit, at least with my boys, I got to think outside of the box. I mean, we love the mountains, so that's, that's great. You know, we get up there almost every weekend and that's really physical for them. Do they like money? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I should ask them. Because here's I could what pay them for steps. I'm I'm seriously oh, no. I, I'm gonna pay I'm gonna start paying the kids <laughs> no. for like just to take basic physical activity. Now th- I get it. I understand this. It sounds like this is like we should pay your kids to like read or like shouldn't pay your kids to like do their basic chores. I get mm-hmm. that and I respect that. But we're in a place now of unusual times, and so will I pay them to get basic physical activity? And the answer is yes, I will. I will absolutely pay. You know what? It's COVID times. I think everything, all cards on the table. I mean, we're we're in a parenting challenging. We're in a parenting challenge like I've never experienced before, and I think I think most parents would say that. I mean, we're all what full time jobs plus we're now homeschooling our kids. Now we're trying to make sure their bodies are are prepped so they don't get injured during the back to athletics or miss their entire short short and truncated season that they've got in front of them. Right, Um, and and so it's 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 a lot. It's a lot of balls in the air for for parents so if, if you need to pay them to do physical activity barry i think Feel great about it. let me know Break how it goes report back <laughs> yeah right just I mean, teach them to like just increase their expectation from themselves too i mean like you're raising that floor mm-hmm. i mean so yeah. that they don't think that like they can do less and less and less and that's okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean like maybe i could try like a boot camp thing where i'm like <laughs> don't be a goddamn loser and i scream at him <laughs> oh, no. and stuff like that. <laughs> that probably wouldn't work too well <laughs> I actually I don't think know about that. that. I think that sort of that military kind of boot camp thing would actually do do good. They would. My boys would, would respond to that. Well, yeah. Oh, they'd be your kids would have fun with that. Yeah. Though. Oh, they would love it. We need to send them to reconditioning school. Yeah. yeah. What is that? Gosh. Where it's like what you do for a dog. Like you know, they have these dogs like tr- like where you kennel them. They go to a thing and they mm-hmm. get reconditioned for like three four weeks and they teach yeah. them. And Doggy it's like college. Intense. Yeah. <laughs> and it's off site. And I think we need this for our kids. We just bring them down to Tacoma <laughs> to a facility Drop down there off. and they recondition them. Just make them. Just, oh, I love this idea. Athletic. Okay, good. Let's cook I mean, that Somebody one needs up. to be doing this. <laughs> Future podcasts. Future podcasts. Well, I do think it's really great advice um, to, to bring the kids in. I'm, I'm actually going to make uh, both both Dash and Avani appointments to come in because Dash, I know that that calf issue has now caused him to miss a number of other preconditioning yeah. workouts and it dramatically decreased his desire to go back to preconditioning and then... That because that same type of thing also happened to his friends that were going to preconditioning. Now none of his friends are going to the preconditioning right. workouts. So, like, what's the chances that he's going to have a successful track season? Well, the season's only five weeks long too, so it's just yeah, it's going to be here in like so two weeks. And it's- I also think that um, well, I, I mean, and probably I, I was I imagine a lot of coaches are maybe being realistic about that return to training. I'm not sure, but if Dash did a million calf raises or whatever, <laughs> obviously he's. It was too much. It was right? too much. I know. It was, I mean, that's too what much. made me think of too. I was like, I, I wonder if these coaches just threw him back in. Like, well, they're just trying to get him to do work, right? Like, yeah. unfortunately, that's like the basis of high school athletics. Is like you just want the kids to work and you want them to to move, and then it, they kind of whittle out from there. It's not as, especially in a shortened season like this, it's not as much about like the intangibles and making sure you're doing everything correct. It's about more so getting the work in and getting ready as quickly as possible. Yeah, I'll just say something here too. I think we've been talking a lot about high school kids, high school sports. Um, I have a middle school brother. He's 13. Um, and a lot of my patients have middle school aged kids and they always ask, you know, like, you know, my, my daughter, my son, like they're not super active, but still dealing with this, you know, whatever pain it is in his knee or in her neck. And they're like, you know, are they, are they old enough? Like, do you think I can bring them in to get treated? And, you know, I think a lot of parents just don't know. And I think it's important that people know that not just high school, but everything below that too. Middle school kids, elementary school kids, they're not going to speak up as much with like what they're feeling. Um, so very important, just pay attention. Like any kind of kink or tightness or whatever it is, like just pay attention to it because they're probably feeling something and they're too scared to say something. Yeah, that's a um, point. Even if they're not super active, like maybe if they're just going on walks or, you know, or doing sitting nothing. They're I mean, doing my, nothing. My yeah. daughter has a like back issues and yeah. I, I've had, a, I brought her in when she was maybe 11 and Tim worked on her, but I mean, she needs to come back now because this year has made her issues like way worse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Like she's 13. Like that's a perfect, you can absolutely come in and get a lot of value. out. Oh, of Oh, totally. You can get a lot out of one visit. Like they don't need to come back all the time, but well, just a little tune up. I'll give you a little shameless plug here too. the guys over at rain fitness over in like that, that Kenmore Bothell area are great for engaging. Those guys are awesome. Um, athletes in general, but especially like athletes under the age 18, they're, yep. they're just awesome with their programs. They, they work really well with them and they get them excited to play again. 
So that's great. William that's James. a great shout out. Yeah. Because that's, I think the thing as a parent, I guess one of the big messages that I would, I would say is there's, there's help out there for you. There's resources out there. And I really feel like this year it's almost felt like you're expected to do so much that at some point it, you just feel kind of hopeless. And it's like, I, you just feel like I don't even know what to do because it's just too many things to address. Yeah. And I think now as we're starting to shift and we're starting to get some positive momentum and seasons changing and, and, you know, we're maybe coming out of this, this phase we've been in, it's a perfect time to get help, you know, and recognize like, okay, cool. There's, there's play like a rain, um, bring the kids in here. Let's, let's do some movement assessment with them. You know, I've also found that kids respond a lot better to subject matter experts than they do to parent advice. So it's like, if I tell them to brush their teeth versus just the dentist, anybody other than the parent. <laughs> yeah. Anybody other than them. <laughs> And that's even when your kids like love and respect you, um, they, they still at some point as they hit their teenage years, especially begin to believe they know much more than, you know, mm -hmm. although that you've lived four times as long as they have, they, they still be, believe that they know what's best. So uh, I find that very, uh, amusing. <laughs> I think it's great though, just to have your kids like, as you were saying, actually like, for kids to be self advocates for themselves and yep. to learn, they, you know, Hey, listen, I need to get an adjustment. You know, like my boys yesterday, they're like, mom, we want to go see Dr. Lee. So I'm like, right. great, let's book you an appointment, you know, because <laughs> yep. um, they knew they needed it. They, you yep. know, they, they were hurting and not feeling great. So having that, having them have that knowledge and that experience so they can ask for self-care when they need it is, is great. So if this is something that resonates with you and you're thinking, oh yeah, I want to do it. It's super easy to do these days because you can just go online and book a new patient. We'd, we'd say if it's the first time that you, your, your kid's been in or they haven't been in a really long, long time, just it would be a new patient type thing is how I would book that on our online booking. Yeah, yep. online booking. Yeah, you can always call it's the front easy. desk, too, if you have any questions. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we're all excited for our kids to get moving more. And we want to make sure they do so safely and pain-free. And we want to give them as many uh, resources as we can to help them as we get ready to transition back into this season of activity as life returns. Love it. <laughs> awesome. Well, until then, enjoy the weather. And uh, let's be loving on those kids. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the clinic. And we'll look forward to see you out and about. Absolutely. Have a great day. And thanks for being on the show, everybody.